All right, welcome into the OG podcast. I'm Scott Bernstein, your host. It's another quick hitter episode. Uh, some more breaking news coming out of New York. Uh, it looks like Vinny Gorgeous, Vinny Bastiano, the uh, very notorious and uh, uh, infamous, flashy, new millennium John Gotti in, in uh, the early 2000s, the boss of the um, acting boss of the Bonanno crime family, who's been serving a uh, life sentence for multiple gangland murders tied to his reign uh, first as a capo out of the Bronx and then as acting boss of the Bonanos. Uh, it looks like he might have some possibility to find some daylight out of this sentence uh, that maybe the life sentence could be in jeopardy right now because of a pretty interesting argument that Vinny uh, Bastiano's attorneys are making uh, in, a, in his in his appeal effort. Uh, it's an argument he's been trying to make for the last five or six years that the U.S. District uh, Court just last week decided that they will hear. And the crux of the argument is that the murder conviction that uh, Bastiano was caught admitting to on tape um, in a 2005 prison conversation that he was having with, at that point, the boss or what people didn't know that he had become an informant. Uh, the boss at that time, who was the most powerful boss in the whole country, Joe Massino. Joe Massino uh, was asking Vinny Basciano, uh to give him the details of what happened in the 2004 gangland homicide of Randy Pizzolo, who was a Bonanno associate and a guy that at first was a, uh, an ally, a close friend of Vinny Gorgeous, um, a guy that he was trying to mentor and uh, eventually a guy that he proposed um, to be made into the Bonanos, but then had a falling out with some of that falling out with had to do with a botched construction job on his house on Vinnie Gorgeous's house. But it was actually much deeper than that. That was kind of a final straw, but uh, Randy Pozzolo was, you know, the quintessential mob cowboy, uh, a loose cannon, a guy that was really acting a fool uh, for a couple years before his, demise, a guy who it appears just his proximity to Vinny Basciano, who was ascending uh, from the early 2000s until eventually he declared himself acting boss, which was another issue we'll talk about in a second. Um, it looks like that proximity to Basciano went to uh, Randy Pozzolo's head. And he was allegedly, or not allegedly, he was convicted, Bastiano was convicted of ordering Pozzolo's murder from behind bars. Pozzolo is killed in November of 2004. Uh, the contract went through Mikey Mancuso, uh, and then from Mancuso got passed on to Dom Sicali, who then passed it on to uh, Ace Aiello. Um, and Aiello was a guy that uh, was referred to by both Bastiano and Chicali, who was Bastiano's right-hand man and succeeded him as the skipper of the Bronx crew when, when Bastiano upped himself to acting boss. They called Aiello, who was a relatively young guy at that point, uh, their Luca Brazzi, you know, a guy that was their enforcer, their, their go-to muscle. He came up uh, in the old Giannini crew uh, with uh, Baldo Amato from the, you know, that, that zip faction of the Bananos that go back to Galante. And so 
Bastiano gets locked up. The hit happens like less than two weeks after Bastiano's locked up. And Messino gets him in a, a, I believe it was a something where their their case, um, the they got to meet to discuss their case. Um, and when they were meeting, Bastiano didn't realize that Messino had already cut a deal after his conviction and uh, in 2004 and was wired up. And Bastiano spilled, you know, spilled the beans uh, on himself and admitted to Joe Messino that he had ordered Randy Pozzolo's murder and that Pozzolo had uh, really gone off the reservation in terms of his behavior and that it was a message that he wanted to send to the street now that he had been declared boss um, by himself. He declared himself the boss. Uh, that uh, he wanted to send a message to the street for everybody to get in line. Now, the, in, the the very intriguing argument that I think could possibly have some legal merit to it is that Bashano's attorneys right now are saying that he was entrapped, that he was set up by, by Messino um, via the, or the FBI vis-a-vis Messino, who was wired for sound, and was asked about a murder where he would have to implicate himself and had no choice but to implicate himself because he was being asked by his boss, um, who was, again, the most powerful mafia down in America at that point and had ordered friend and foe alike murdered over the past 30 years before that, 30, 40 years before that, uh, for infractions way less severe than refusing to answer uh, when when your boss, well, you know, he was the acting boss at that point, Bastiano and Messino, even though he was working for the government, was the official boss um, of the Bananos at that point. According to the attorneys, Bastiano had to answer. And by answering, uh, incriminated himself and if you go to the to the conviction uh and, and uh Vinny Bastiano's trial the the meat and potatoes of that conviction can be traced back to that confession and and those tape recordings and and uh Joe Messino's testimony so the Bastiano ap- uh, uh, appeal team is arguing that a, there was a negligence of counsel um, back then not to challenge it the way they're challenging it now, and that anything that he said to Messino incriminating himself should be tossed and he should get a new trial. So, you know, Bastiano is 63. It, it's amazing. These pictures filter out of prison and he, he looks like he still looks like a million bucks, always the hair is always perfectly coiffed, uh, always smiling, always, um, you know, showing that he's connected with a multitude of different criminal ethnic factions. Uh, and then there's one photo circulating with him with all the, uh, some of the Mexican mafia. And uh, even if this gets tossed and he gets a new trial, there are some other factors at play with him. Uh, you know, he he was also convicted of the Frank Santoro murder, which was another murder that he did unsanctioned and had to kind of retroactively get approved with Messino. Santoro was threatening to uh, kidnap and kill Vinny's son. So he acted quickly. They murdered him. He was convicted of that, and then he was also convicted of attempting to plan the murders of prosecutors and judges. So it, it's pretty extreme in terms of what he was convicted of. If he can get the Pozzolo murder conviction tossed and somehow earn acquittal at a retrial without that damning uh, tape coming back to haunt him or Messino jumping back on the stand in theory. 
uh, you know, you, you could have a situation where just like Mancuso pled out to, to, to this Pozzola murder for being a middleman, and he only did 12 years. So if he gets the one murder case tossed, I mean, I guess there's a possibility that within a resentencing um, after 25 years or so, 20, 25 years, that he could be sprung in theory if he beats this case, if he gets a new trial. Um, and before I close, to give a couple more details on, on Randy Pozzolo, um, and you can go to Gangster Report right now and, and read a deep dive of the circumstances that surround his murder Pozzolo met Bastiano uh, in the construction industry uh, out of the Bronx. Uh, he was managing a, a Bonanno controlled uh, contracting company. Bastiano was a supplier, started hanging out together. Like I said, before Bastiano really took a liking to Pozzolo, thought he could kind of train him the way that maybe that, uh, you know, Dom C. Cali went from a guy that uh, you know wasn't made to you know a capo status uh, over a pretty short period of time under Vinny's guidance, and uh, Chicali also liked Pozzolo, but Pozzolo just started acting uh, very erratically um, around two thousand two. Um, things started to kind of domino, uh, altercations with other crime families, uh, altercations with guys within the Bonanno family. And, uh, you know, in 2002, in the spring of 2002, he, sh he shot a Gambino associate uh, outside a, a, a swanky Queens restaurant in Bayside. Uh, there were dust-ups that he had with the Genovese. There was uh, an allegation that uh, Consigliere, or a guy that became Consigliere and at that time was a capo, uh, tough Tony Federici, uh, Federici, had put out a contract with him through uh, a Genovese button, uh, Hippie Zafferdino. And then there were complaints that were coming from the Bonanos uh, the Brooklyn crew was complaining. Uh, Joe C., Joe Camerano, who eventually became an acting boss. Now he's on the shelf, but back then was capo, uh, acting capo for his dad. And uh, he came to to, to uh, Benny Bastiano and, and said that uh, his boy Pozzolo was acting wild and out of control and that he had uh, uh, brought a, a pistol to a sit down, which is a, a a major breach of mob etiquette. And then things started to really spiral uh, in in the in the spring of '04. There was an altercation, physical altercation between Vinny Bastiano's son, Vinny Jr., and the son of the Genovese consigliere, Quiet Dom Cirillo. A quiet Dom son Nikki and Vinny Jr. were in business together. They had some type of falling out. I hear allegedly over a drug deal gone bad. And Nikki Cirillo slapped Vinny Jr. Um, within two or three weeks, Vinny Cir or within two or three weeks, Nikki Cirillo disappears. He's never been seen again. Bastiano is caught on tape talking to Messino, denying that him and his guys had any role in the Nikki Cirillo hit and that it actually had been ordered by his dad. Um, it's never been confirmed, but it's a, a hot rumor that circulated for, for a good 20 years now. Um, but Pizzolo over the last couple months of his life bragged openly about being a, a trigger man on the, uh, the Nikki Cirillo uh, kidnapping and murder. And one of the some of the bragging happened uh, in front of uh, Bonanno guys, like powerful Bonanno guys at some wedding receptions uh, where he had to be taken aside and, and told to, to zip it. Uh, he was known as a big drinker um, and had a, a, a real big mouth with a lot of bravado. At the end of his life, he kind of knew that that things were coming to an end. 
uh, took out, a, tried to take out a million dollar life insurance policy on himself and uh, was supposed to sign the paperwork the day he died and uh, told his daughter that that he thought he was, you know, was going to be killed. He eventually was. Um, but I, I'm guessing that if Bastiano can somehow succeed on this appeal and gets another time in front of a jury, that uh, they'll make the argument, and it would be an argument to make. I mean, there's backing to that argument that there were a lot of different people uh, that wanted Randy Pozzolo dead. The only problem with that is that Mikey Mancuso and Don Tricali have both copped to their roles in the Pozzolo murder. Uh, Tricali did like eight, nine years and, and uh, became a witness. Mancuso did 12 years and is back out now and is alleged to be the boss of the Bananos. Um, him and Bastiano at one point were close, uh, had a falling out. But uh, it'd be difficult, I think, because even if you can get the, the Messino stuff and the, the tape of admitting uh, his role in it thrown out, you're still going to probably have Chicali on the witness stand saying that he received the order um, and that it came from, from Bastiano and that he had firsthand knowledge that Bastiano was, was uh, openly trying to murder Pozzolo before Bastiano got uh, locked up. And then when he gets locked up, he sends uh, word through Mikey Mancuso to, to tell Dom that that thing with Nikki, make sure it still gets done. Uh, I apologize. The, that, that thing with Randy, make sure it still gets done. So only time will tell, uh, but nothing seems to really make Vinny Gorgeous sweat. Uh, he is uh, always fresh to death, man. Uh, this guy looks like uh, he, he's spending his, his days on the beach, not uh, in Supermax or, you know, in the, the <laughs> when he's in the, when he's in prison, he's being watched just as much uh, as he was being watched on the street. So we'll keep you updated with what's going on with that, but an interesting development um, for Jimmy, who will be back on the uh, full length episode and for Ben behind the glass, I'm Scott Bernstein, OG pod out. Mm -hmm.